Hey guys, my name is David. Welcome to Fearless TV. We're so excited you've joined us today. I know this message is going to impact you in such a powerful way. If you've been watching our previous messages or even today, you're just positively impacted or really moved by this message. We encourage you to share it with a friend. Put it on your Facebook, your Instagram story. We want to get the word out about what God is doing through Fearless here in LA. Or if you're saying, hey, how do I further partner with the mission of what Fearless is doing, what God is really doing through our church, in downtown LA, reaching these, these people who don't know Jesus, we have our Fearless Partnerships. It's basically just a group of people who are giving monthly, whether a part of our church or your state's away, and you're just saying, I wanna sow into what God is doing. You can give monthly to the vision of Fearless. You can go to fearlessla.com, click on the giving link. There's a whole description in there. I encourage you read about it, pray on it, and just be obedient to the voice of God as he speaks to you. Other than that, check out this amazing message from our pastor. We love you guys, we'll see you soon. Last week I started laying out uh, seven things I wish someone would have told me when I was single. And seven things I really have to keep telling myself while I'm married. Yeah, how many of you guys know once you get married, you don't stop learning? Okay, good. Uh, if you are a smart husband or wife, you just, amen, amen. At least husbands, wives, you know, they got it all down, amen. Praise God. They are any points? No, good, all right, okay, good. Uh, but, you know, here we are, I, I, you know, we're not gonna, just jump onto something else because we're in the building. We're just gonna keep going. And we're gonna keep doing what we're doing. And so I just felt like last week I gave you three points, uh, three things that I wish someone would've told me when I was single and uh, that I'm continuing to learn as I'm married. And I thought I'd just keep going on that. And we have, we have seven of these. I'm gonna get through two more today. And so I'm just stretching this out so you'll come back another week. Uh, to get the last last couple back there. And uh, who knows, maybe Christy will help me run those down. Because uh, as you can see, she, she knows how to preach. R way better than me. Uh, but anyways, praise God for great wives. Amen. Um, the first thing I, I want to do is just go over the ones that I said. And here's the deal. Look, on, on these kind of moments, uh, sometimes we can feel like these moments aren't spiritual. When we start talking about dating or marriage or relationships, I don't know anything in my life that has both pushed me forward and held me back more than relationships, I, I, spiritually, like problems in relationships, situations in relationships. I mean, I don't know anything in my life that, is, that has been more spiritually connected to my spiritual journey than other people in my life. And so when we're talking about relationships, we're not just talking about, uh, you know, dating relationships. We're talking about all kinds of relationships. And so these are seven things I wish someone would have told me when, when I was single that could have prepared me for maybe what I didn't foresee in my life coming. And so the first thing I said is that before you deepen your relationship with someone, a significant other, whether it's a friend, a boss, a coworker, a, 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 a boo, you know, uh, you know who, I, I don't know, what, what, for it's whatever, the first thing you should do is deepen your relationship with God. I know that's what I'm supposed to say, I'm the pastor, but I am wearing a leather jacket so you know that it's not that simple, it's saucy a little bit, but I'm just telling you that we got to deepen our relationship with God. If, 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 if we can't deepen our relationship with God, which some of us go, man, I don't know how to do that. Well, here's the, here's the problem with that, is that we're trying to deepen relationships with others. And maybe the reason why it keeps not working is because others are imperfect. <laughs> like they're gonna let you down. Like I'm gonna let you down. I, I, like my wife can tell you, I'm gonna let you down. I, I know you think, wow, that's our pastor. He, his breath always smells good. He's always on time. He's, you know, he always looks this nice. No, Desi put makeup on my face. I, I'm just telling you, I don't look this good. I, I, I took a shower today. Like, we're all going to let each other down. Like, the person next to you is broken. As broken as you and I really are, but we won't want to tell anyone about. Because we're people. We, 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 no matter how perfect we come off, we're screwed up. We, we got things, we got issues. And if you don't know that, you got more issues than anybody else in this room. And that's the person to stay away from. And, and before, if you don't deepen your relationship with God, who is perfect? See, this is like learning with the training wheels on. 
Getting a relationship with God is like learning how to have relationships made easy. This is like relationships for dummies. Having a relationship with God because God is perfect. God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never walk out on you. He'll never spit on you. He'll never stab you in the back. He'll never stab you in the front. He'll never gossip about you. He'll never say, oh, it's not you, it's me. He never say that. He never say that. He goes, no. It's you. <laughs> because I'm perfect. And, and so that freaks us out to have a relationship with a perfect person. But for the first time, maybe we can see ourselves and not have to go, oh, well, well, you. We can go, no, you, you're pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm a mess. And when we finally realize we're a hot mess, God can begin to clean us up and prepare us to have relationship with each other. I'm so thankful for God. I'm so thankful for God in my life that he slaps me around the right way, in a loving way, in a, with a white glove on. He says, Jeremy, you need to forgive. You need to apologize. You need to, I'll be so mad at my wife for something that she did. And I'll be in the car. I'm not coming in that loft. We don't have another room. I can't go in another room, so I just go in the car. I'm gonna sit there. I just think, this is hot in the car. It's awkward in the car. I'm, I'm going to sleep in here all night. And I'll hear the Holy Spirit go, say, go tell her sorry. I'll say, for what? I didn't do anything. We'll figure it out. Find something you did. I'm so thankful for God. If you don't have a deep relationship with God like that, you can't hear His voice to help you with the relationships with others. Because it's not long after I come to my wife and find what I did in the situation that all of a sudden her heart melts and she's over there cooking me dirty rice and I'm getting dirty thoughts and God moves on our relation. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I, don't, don't leave a church because I said that. I'm sorry. It tells you I'm a little saucy. Amen. Oh, we are married. No, it's okay. Love, sex, and dating. Good. Okay, anyways. Number two. Le Live a whole life. Live a whole life. Like, don't wait. Why wait? Why wait for some guy to tell you you can be special? Why wait for some girl to tell you you can start your hobby? Why wait for somebody else to start your... One day, one day, one day, we'll, we'll be doing that pottery together. And we'll, we'll... What if he doesn't like pottery? Just go do the stinking pottery yourself. Right? One day, we'll watch movies. You know, go see a movie. Go get out of your house. Go be a whole person, but beyond just doing something, become something. Don't, don't wait for somebody else to form who you are and aren't and won't be. Don't wait for somebody to complete you. Don't ever say the words, you complete me. No, baby, no guy completes you. Only Jesus completes you. No, no girl completes you. No, if they complete you, what happens when they're gone? And you're walking around half. Wish I could go out, I'm just half. I'm just looking for my other hole. No, no. A whole person is not looking for a half person. A whole person is looking for a whole person. Amen? If you're married, become a whole person. If you're single, become a whole person. Look, if you're married, it's not too late. It's not over. It's not like, well, I married my other half and that's it. We're just, we're stuck. I should have got became whole so I could find the other hole. No, no. If you have been half, stop making your list. Can I tell you this? Stop making your list. I don't, I don't know what list you got. I don't, know, I don't know what list you're doing, what points. But here's what I encourage you to do. Begin to make a different list. Make a list of who you want to become. Make a list. This is for married people too. Okay? Because I know, you know, my wife, she can just start making a list. I wish my husband would do this. I wish he would do this. She'll see someone else doing this. See, see that husband does that. See, that husband. And so, so I'm just talking to you right now, honey. Just begin to make your own list, and I have to make my own list. And, and not a list for her, a list for me. Who do I want to become in a year from now? I want to be better so I can be better for my family. I can't change my wife. I, I know that. I'm a smart man. She can't change me. We are both stubborn people. And do we have any stubborn married people? Come on, you, I mean, just come on, just admit it. 
I'll raise both hands, both feet. I don't know how we came together. We do not complete each other. We are like oil and water. We are both feisty and stubborn. And look, people think, man, you're just a pastor. You're going to be like, you're going to be like John, the apostle, falling asleep on Jesus' shoulder. And I'm saying like, bro, I'm like Peter. I will cut you. I got a sword still in here. You got to understand, God uses all kinds of people. <laughs> not all of us can be John. Some of us got to be a little saucy. I mean, some people might be Judas. You got to watch out. <laughs> what I'm saying is we got to work on us. If we begin to work on us, we become better. And, and when we become better, we attract that better to us. Become a whole person. Number three, develop a habit of joy. Let it, let it be your habit. I know we got a lot of habits. We got some bad habits. We got some good habits. But develop a habit of joy to the point where you don't even have to choose it anymore. It just happens. I started working out two years ago. I know it doesn't show all the way, but I missed a few sessions here and there. And it's a little better. And, um, but thank you, honey. Uh, but at first, I had to choose. I had to make a choice. I'm going to go today. I'm going to go today. We have this text. Are you going today? Thumbs up. I'm going today. And it was the group text, it was the group community, it was the, it was the okay, I'm going to do it. But there was somewhere along the journey that I stopped responding in the text because I just made a choice that I'm going all the time. This is, this is now who I am. If, if you keep doing something over and over and over again, it becomes your habit and it becomes who you are and you actually feel lost without it. I, I wanna, I, I would, how awesome would it be if a bunch of Christians actually got in such of the habit of joy that they were lost without it? That, that no matter what broke out, no matter what situation, no matter how high the fire got, we, we were like the three Hebrew boys. We were, we were worshiping in the fire and out of the fire. What if we became like David instead of the armies that were afraid and we said, oh, Goliath, oh, God is way bigger than God. What if we chose joy? Let me, let me put it this way. What if we chose joy when we got fired from the job? What if we chose joy when they walked out on us? Well, not, not to just stick it to them. Because that's not joy, that's manipulation. What, what if we chose joy because that's who we are? That, that someone else doesn't have power over my state of being. That a day, that Monday doesn't have power, that Tuesday doesn't have power. Like, I am empowered by the God of the universe and he has given me life, he has given me liberty, he has given me peace, he has given me joy and I'm choosing, amen, amen. I'm going to get to the, the two for today, hopefully. Good. Uh, number four. I'm going, to, I'm going to go with number five and then back to number four for my PowerPoint people. That's okay. So I'll say number five. Number five, your life isn't a competition but a call. I know I just messed up all the organized people. I'm sorry, I have ADD. And I thought this point will be better first and the second point will be better to end. I just, just trust me in this. Number five, we'll come back to number four. Number five, your life, I wish someone would have told me this. I wish while I was trying to like get everybody's attention to see me and notice me and I wish while I was looking over everybody's shoulder to see if I was lining up with where everybody else was at the age that they were and uh, at the status that they were and I wish Today, I have to remind myself this, as, as tonight, all the pastors from around the world will post about their church and the crowd size and how many got baptized. I, mean, I don't know what happens at some of these churches, but like 10,000 people get baptized every single service. We can't even baptize anyone today because there's a hole in the baptismal tank. And so if you came to get baptized, God bless you. We might just douse you with a hose. <laughs> a holy hose. It is the soft launch. Forgive us. Right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wish I could remind myself of this. Like, often, my life is not a competition. In other words, I can't find out how I'm doing by looking around. I can't, I can't see on, on their feed if, if I'm lining up. I can't look over my shoulder, in front of my shoulder. I can't even feel good about where I'm at because at least I'm not there. I wish someone would have told me that because I would have stopped trying to rush the process. 
maybe you're not bad at that, but I'm really bad at that. Like at the red light, I'm just like ready to go, trying to watch the other lights. I, I don't like to stop. I like to go. I like to go. I like to go. Someone asked me recently, they said, hey, how are you doing with the grand opening? Is this a lot of work? I said, I love work. I mean, if, 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 you, if you put work in front of me, I'm, a, I'm good. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm, I'm at my best moment when there's stuff to do. You know what I hate? When there's nothing to do. When, 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 when I'm looking around, everybody else has got something to do. And, and God's like, I need you to wait right now. I need you to hold on right now. I need to tell you that your life is not a competition. It's a call. God has a call on your life that's different than my life. Somehow he stuck us together and part of my life connects to your life. But you cannot look in someone else's life and compare how you're doing. I, I, I know you've been hating yourself. I know you've been putting yourself down because you're not there yet. But I just came to let you know that wherever you are, God is proud of you. He loves you you he's for you he, he he believes in the call on your life your life is an assignment that only you can complete you don't compete in it it's not a race to the biggest chair it's a race to your chair some people will sit in somebody else's chair their whole life and think it's gonna bring them comfort and all it's going to do is not fit because there's only one chair that fits you. You don't have to, this, this is why I'm telling you this, because you don't have to become somebody else to gain her or to gain him. you got to be you. you got to be the you God made you to be. If they don't like you, move right on. Keep going on. You say, well, what if I'm married? Well, maybe you're not the you you're supposed to be yet. Maybe you need to start transforming who you, God, made you to be. Come on, we're always working on you. We're always working on becoming a better me. Look, I'm not into today. My life is not a competition, but it is a call. Which way is a call? Forward. God is calling me forward. God is calling me forward. God is calling me forward. I want to give you this last one. Number four. Five, four. Good. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> Number four, there are no flaws in God's timing. You see how I did that? The other one first, this one second, this is good. I'm telling you, there are no flaws in God's timing. This is where most of us get tripped up. Because if I were to say, if you believe in God... Do you think there's some flaws in God's power? If you really believe in God, you'd say, No. I say, Do you believe God could heal you? Yes. But then I say, Do you believe God has called you to wait? There might be some flaws in how he figured this out. I mean, I think he would want me to wait. You want me to move. But what we have to understand is if there's no flaws in his power, there's no flaws in his purpose, there's no flaws in his person, there's no flaws in his presence, then there's no flaws in his... Even if it doesn't feel like it, it's the right timing, it's the right... I feel like you should be moving forward, God, but you're holding me stale. I I feel like something should be shifting, God. This goes beyond relationships. This goes into business. This goes into dreams. This goes into purpose. This goes into having kids. This goes into everything. But at the core of God's timing, many times we're waiting for what we want God to do, and it's not happening. And we're like, God, I I think you forgot. I think you thought I was younger than I am. I think you thought, I mean, I know I look good and I look like I'm 25, but God, I'm 35. I don't know if you forgot that. I know, I know, you know, I know, I know, you know, I I know, you know, just letting you know, I know, you know, but I don't think, you know, I think, you know what I'm going through. There must be a flaw in your timing. There are no flaws in God's timing. I want to read you something about God's timing. 
says this in God's, about God's timing. I, I want to read you this. I, I want you to see this about God's timing. In Proverbs 16, 9, it explains a little bit more about God's timing. This, this might help you with his timing. And it says in Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts, touch your neighbor and say that's you. So in your heart, in their hearts, humans plan their course. It's up to you to plan your course. The good news is God already put your course inside of you. It's written on the code of your DNA. You, you, it's your course. You, you, it's, it's when go, people go, I, I don't know how I know, but I just know I'm supposed to do this. I, I know there's something greater. Wh whatever it is, that's your course. And you didn't come up with your course, although you, you might felt like you did, or you almost feel selfish about your course. I just want to let you know, if, if you know that you know that you know, it's the course that God put inside you. And until you find that, until you feel that, until you get the picture of that, you can't move forward. And God says, in, in man's heart, they plan their course. You hear someone go, man, I'm going to start a new business. And it's going to be awesome. Or, or this year, I'm, I'm just really believing. Some, some people are putting down their list. Here's the list I want in a person. Well, that's your course. That's some things that God is putting in the code of your DNA. The Bible says man plans his course. But, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I thought I was going to do the whole thing. But the Lord establishes their steps. I got my course. I'm gonna get to the. I'm gonna get to Manish up there. There he is, my destiny. That's me, a little Tanner. I'm up there. I'm at this destiny up there. I, the business I want to start, the marriage I want to have, the the family that I see. You think you planned it? God put it in you. There it is. And then God goes. Okay, you ready? Yeah! And God goes, wait! Don't move! You don't get to do this part. This part is called the walk of faith. But I can't see how that's going to work out good. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. So God goes, I've planned a whole bunch of steps. I don't, I don't really like steps. Can I just, can I just beam? Can I just, can baby Yoda put me there? I mean, what, what can I do? And God goes, I got steps. I don't like steps. I, I told you, I already told you that God. I don't like steps. Remember, I'm more like Peter, not like John. I don't like steps. And God says, I've prepared. But those steps are not for me. No, they're prepared for you. Wow. Remember, you are not a competition. You're in an assignment. Oh, gosh, so good. The steps have your name on it. On. And in this point, we start getting frustrated at God because it's kind of mean. You're going to make me go through steps to get to that? And God says, there are no flaws in my timing. Just like I have a purpose, I also have a plan. God doesn't just have a purpose for you. He also has a plan for you. But he says, look, if you're going to get there, it's one step at a time. I got a box on top of the cross. And the box says to my friends in the good seats, what does it say? What does it say? Anybody see that? purpose and it also says heavy it's a heavy purpose and it says Amazon it says so many so many reasons to smile your purpose is heavy it's not from Amazon and you got a lot of reasons to smile but how do I get there God says good I'm glad you asked I'm gonna provide steps so we go okay God um, bring out the steps and we go <laughs> Man, I I'm kind of afraid of heights. Like, I don't know. That looks a little shaky. I don't know if God's playing this out right. Those don't look like my kind of steps. I mean, you know, what do you think, Iris? You think you, you can do that? Or 
and you're saying, I'm scared. I don't want, and this is exactly what we tell God. And so we say, God, okay, here's what I want to do. I'm going to settle for my own steps. You got your steps. Give me my steps. And so we, we say, God, I got one I can handle. I got some steps that make sense to me. And so we go, God, I got this. It's got two sides. It's, it's, it's awesome. It looks new. And we start climbing our own steps. And guess what happens? We never reach the purpose God has for us because we choose the steps that make sense. We choose the steps that we're not afraid of. We choose the step, okay, God, I can do this, but I'll do it my way. No, no, God says, no, if you try to do it your way, you're gonna miss the only way. And so God says, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get at the bottom of the steps. Come here. I'm gonna get at the bottom of the steps and I'm gonna hold you. I got you and I'm not gonna let you fall. And what I want you to do is I want you to climb up with full trust. Now, you know, Pablo's not God, so I ain't climbing that. I'm just telling you. (laughs) Just pretend. (laughs) He's going to drop me. (laughs) No, no. I like you, Pablo, but I don't trust you that much. Don't trust anyone to the level of God. (laughs) You imagine, here's God standing at the bottom. And he said, come on, I, I got the anchor. I'll be your anchor. I'm going to give you steps. Don't, don't choose your own steps. You'll never get to where I've called you. You'll never become every. Look, you have to trust not just the purpose. You have to trust the plan. And the plan, look, sometimes I've found that the steps don't make sense. I, I've found, and it's crazy that after you're on them, then people go, would you have rather not had to go through that step? And you're like, I mean, it would have been nice, but if I hadn't have gone through that step, if I hadn't have walked through, you see, God is not punishing you. He's preparing you. He's, he's elevating you. Each thing you walk through, each thing you go through, every time someone walks out and says, nah, you say, it's okay. I, I knew this was my journey. Each moment is a step towards your destiny. See, when God gives you steps, he's not messing with you because there are no flaws in God's timing. I found t- taking a step with God could look like someone breaking your heart. I found taking a step with God could look like getting fired from a job. Because if you hadn't been fired from a job, you wouldn't have gone through depression, you wouldn't have gone through anxiety, you wouldn't have gone through fear, and you wouldn't have started your own company. Because when the fear and anxiety and depression couldn't kill you, all of a sudden you realize, well, there's nowhere to go but up from here. So I might as well start my own company. I might as well be my own boss because God has brought me this far. He's not going to let me down now. There are no flaws in God's timing. But you got to say yes. Ah, you got to say yes. God is not a manipulator like man. I think we're all trying to work the manipulator out of ourself. My one prayer as a pastor is, God, let me not manipulate people. You've made me good at speaking. You've made me good at counseling. But if I use this to manipulate people, Lord, strike me with lightning. Teach me how to stand back and let you speak to people. Teach me how to stand back and let you guide people. God is not a manipulator. God won't talk you into it. God won't twist your arm. God will just say, do you trust me? See, we, we don't understand that because we're used to people going, well, if you really wanted it. We, we get used to people pouting and act like they're mad at us till we do what they want us to do. God doesn't do that. When you say no to God, he doesn't pout. He just smiles. He's not trying to control you while he's controlling the stars. He chooses to release control over you. While he's controlling the moon, he chooses to release control over you. Why? Control isn't love. Control is lust. And God does not lust you. He loves you. And he cares about you. And he called you. And he chose you. 
And he goes, I'm not going to control you. I've prepared steps for you. You see, your greatest destiny is to come up here with God, to come sit on his lap. And the steps are preparing you to look like him. They're shaping you. They're molding you. The pain is pushing you. The pressure is preparing you. How do you shoot a squirt gun except pump it? God has been pumping your life. He's been preparing your life. He's trying to give you some tenacity. He's trying to give you some power. He's allowed life to hit you always. So at the end of it, you know nothing could take you out. Nothing can threaten his call over your life. And the people that are shouting aren't excited. I'm not their favorite team. They're not shouting because they like me more than somebody else. They are shouting because this means something to them. Because God has set them free from so much. Come on, don't judge someone's praise. They're excited not because we're Pentecostal, because we're hyped up today. We're excited because God still loves us, even though we chose to run, even though we chose to hide. Haven't used one of these in a while. Some of you kids don't know what this is. <laughs> Y'all thought I was 21. I'm 40. Smile. That's it. I don't have to show you. I don't have to take another one. I'm not even putting a filter on it. Ready? Detroit, looking good today, bro. Come on, man, flossing. Ah! You guys want one? Can't promise you you're ever gonna see this picture. It's just for fun. You know what's crazy is only I got to see the picture I just took. Winded it, because only one eye fits in this. I know we have our screens, and who's the first person you look at in the picture? <laughs> don't say others, that you're a liar. Even if you don't care, you're like, okay, I look bad, but I don't care. Can you use, use some face tune or something? I mean, this kind of camera looks a little more like our destiny. God gives you a vision, it snapped, and then all of a sudden he goes, awesome, let's take a couple more. And at first you're just like pumped, this is awesome, praise God, I've got a lot of pictures. And then it runs out and God goes, okay, what do, you, what do we do now? Well, when we used to have these, my mom was so bad at this, we would have a whole drawer full of them. Because we would go on vacation, spend all our money, they wouldn't have any money to get the camera developed. I have anyone that was kind of honky like that? Okay, good, okay, amen. Maybe you weren't honky, but that was my version of it, amen. And we had a whole drawer. And then I remember when I was like 18, my mom got like 32 of these developed, and she's like, come look at these. And I'm like, mom, I don't care. Like, it's from 10 years ago. What you have to do when you take a picture is you have to trust to let go of the picture you once saw Deliver it to Rite Aid, Walmart, Costco, in the kingdom to God's hands. And trust that the one working on the steps. And what they do when you give them these cameras is in a dark room where no light is allowed. They wear special glasses that allow them through red light to see the film that is naked to the, to the normal eye, the red blood of Jesus. See, God doesn't see you under yourself. He sees you under the blood of his son that he paid on Calvary for your destiny. Nobody else can see you. It's okay. God can see you. He's seen you through different lenses. And he's seen what isn't even formed yet. And in the dark room, the picture has to be birthed. 
It can't come out of the dark room too soon or it will be missing part of its purpose. The person who is in charge knows the exact step to pull it out. Hey, Desi, your pictures are ready. Cabo, yeah, looks like you had fun. And Desi comes to the counter and she collects not the original vehicle, she collects the finished product. Here's my question. Can we trust God to finish the product? Can we trust him with the steps, even if it's as close as relationships? You know, my beautiful wife and three kids, you know, we broke up for two years. Never thought we would date again. I broke her heart. I went and dated other girls. Because I dated other girls, she dated some other guys to get back at me. But somehow, we had to walk through some steps. I don't know how God works. I don't understand his timing. And I'm sure one day he'll explain it to me. But the best way to worship is to say, God, you don't even have to explain it to me. I'm just happy to pick up the product. I'm just happy to drop it off and trust you got the green room, you got the dark room, you got the red room. You, you go do your thing, and I'll walk through the steps, and I'll trust you with my dream. I'll trust you with my relationships. I'll trust you with my heart. And then God will hand you another camera after he gives you the pictures and say, start over. Take some more pictures. As soon as you catch what's going to happen, you're not depressed about walking through the steps. You're walking, you ever seen someone walking around different through the steps? You're depressed on a step they're rejoicing over? It's because they've already seen it produce the product in their life. That's the people that are worshiping right now. They're saying, God, I know it was down. I was out for the count, but God did it. He did it again. He's going to, I'm going to take some more pictures. I'm going to be free to be me. You better get smiling over there. I'm taking pictures and I'm going to keep taking pictures because God has no flaws in his timing. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes, Jesus. I trust you. Yes, Jesus. Whatever. Whatever, God. Whatever you want to walk me through. Shake me through it. Make me better. David said it this way. Though you slay me, I trust you. What is he saying? God, there's no flaws in your timing. You know what kind of life that is? That's a fearless life. I want to live a fearless life. There are no flaws in your timing. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but I came just for you. Maybe not everybody needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. God, there are no flaws in your timing. Your promises are yes and amen. I want to show you this last verse. Can you put that one up? Your promises are yes and amen. And, and you can stand up to your feet. You can stand up to your feet. Your promise is in Proverbs, I think. You want me to find it? There we go. No. Your promises are yes. Corinthians. Second, first or second Corinthians. I'm sorry. I can't find it in my notes, but I know you have it. I used it in the last service. Maybe not. Uh, Jesus. Do you have it? Thank you. For all God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ. With a res So God's promises for you have been fulfilled in who? Christ. And they are a resounding. So here's what God's saying to you. Yes. 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 That thing that's in your heart. Yes. No matter how many people say no. Yes. I heard you, God. I heard you say yes. God is saying yes. And through Christ, our amen which for a long time I meant, I thought that meant finished. So Christ says yes, and I say finished. But the Bible says right here, which means yes. Oh, ascends to God for his glory. When Christ says yes, 
we have to say yes. When Christ says yes, look, God might be saying yes and you've been saying no. But the moment you say yes, it gives God glory and you move up another step closer to your destiny. Amen? Amen. Come on. Can we say yes today? Can we just sing this chorus together? Can we just lift our hands? We say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes, God. We say yes to the steps. There are no flaws in your timing. 